Hi, this is Viking Guitar. Uh, at the request of several people that saw my last video, I'm making another home recording tutorial video. This one's going to focus on MIDI instruments, specifically drums through Reaper. Now, this video is going to cover all free software. I'm going to give you the links on where to find that free software so you can get up and running with some drum tracks on your own right now. I'm also going to cover the Easy Drummer drumming software, even though it's not free, because a lot of people use that, and I think it's a good thing to know. And also just to demonstrate some of the differences between what a free drum program will offer and what a slightly uh, more extensive one will offer. So without any further waiting, let's get started. All right. I'm going to assume at this point you've downloaded Independence Free, gotten it installed, and that you've opened Reaper and have a basic knowledge of the functionality of Reaper. If not, you can go to the um, Reaper forums at the link provided below or watch my first video and that should bring you up to speed. So we've got a new blank project here. We're going to double click in the empty space here to add a track. We're going to right click in the title bar here, or double click, and name it Drums. One thing to keep in mind is uh, if you're just setting up uh, plugins in Reaper, go to Options and down to Preferences, and under Plugins here, click on VST. Make sure the path here is the folder where you're installing those plugins, and I recommend you install all your plugins in the same root folder. Um, this is where Reaper is going to look for them, and if it doesn't know where to look, it won't find them. So make sure that's what it should be. Click OK. Click on the FX bar for your instrument here. Go down to VSTI because that's where it's going to put independence free since it's a VST instrument. Click on it and add it. Now, independence free has a lot of different stuff you can do with it and it's pretty powerful in a lot of ways, but for right now we're going to ignore all this stuff on the side, all this stuff on the top. All we're going to do is go over here to uh, this O1, click here to load an instrument, click on it. If you go to independence free instruments and acoustic and electronic drum kits, you'll see that they have a whole bunch of different acoustic and electronic drum kits. Each one of these sounds fairly uh, similar. They've replaced some of the snare sounds and kick sounds and so forth and some of them, so they all sound a little different. But uh, for right now, we're just going to click on Acoustic Drum Kit 1. It'll load it up, and once this stuff appears, you're good to go. You can close this guy out. Now, if this is the first time uh, that you've ever done any MIDI stuff, what you're going to need to do is um, basically click your cursor where you want to have your MIDI event, which in this event, uh, situation is going to be a drum pattern. Go to Insert, click New MIDI Item, and it's going to put in a new blank canvas for MIDI data here. Okay, so what you want to do at this point is double click on this blank MIDI item. Now, it opens up uh, a MIDI window. This is basically an enlarged version of the timeline in this portion here. These are This is your first measure here in white, and these are your individual beats, one, two, three, four. On the left here are a whole bunch of numbered lines, and these are going to represent the different individual sounds that are contained within this drum kit. Uh, you can go to view and change it to piano roll if you're dealing with uh, a MIDI instrument that doesn't have multiple sounds so much as it's uh, just different notes like a flute or a piano, this is going to be your, uh, your piano line for it. We're going to go back to named notes here. Now, if you click on any of these numbers here on the side, any of these bars, it's going to play the sound sample that's contained on that line. So if we click on 36 here, we get a kick drum sound. If we click on 38, we get a snare drum sound. Now, if you want to, you can just remember that 36 is a kick and 38 is a snare. Or what you can do is you can double click with the right mouse button. So double right click on any one here. And it brings up a text field where you can label it whatever you want. This is a much better way of keeping track so you're not going, oh, was uh, 38 the snare or was 37 the snare? Once you do that whole thing, you can go to File, Save Note Names to File, and you can save it all as a text file so you can load it next time. Also, since I'm a cool guy and I want to help you, I've already done this. So if you look down in the description for this video, there's going to be a download link to uh, Independence Free Drum Names. It's going to be this, Independence Free Drum Names, and it's going to have all of them pre-named. So when you start a new project and you load this on your effects line, open up a MIDI item, go to File, Load Note Names from File, and it'll bring all of these up. Now that we've got the instrument loaded, we've got all of our uh, individual drum sounds named here, it's time to start actually creating a drum pattern. So for the start, let's take the kick sound here, and let's put it on the first beat and the third beat. Now when we rewind to the beginning and hit play, it's going to play it in sequence. Just like that. 
you can see where this is going. Let's add some snare sounds on the off beats. And let's add some closed hat sounds, eight notes throughout. If you haven't figured out already, you can add and delete notes by double clicking on any place in here, or you can right click and go to insert notes and mouse cursor, or click the insert button. So now we've got this whole drum pattern, let's go back and play it through. Sounds pretty decent, right? One thing uh, to keep in mind though is that uh, it sounds pretty robotic. Everything is exactly on the beat, the volumes of everything are just the same. So let's erase all of this kick and snare stuff for right now and just focus on the hats. You can see that for each note there's a bar down here in the velocity field. Now we can change this field to handle all sorts of stuff like the pitch, the, the panning, all sorts of stuff, but we'll just leave it at velocity for now. If we adjust the heights of any of these bars, it's going to adjust the volume, or the, rather the velocity, of the hit. So where it's lower, they're going to be softer. Where it's higher, they're going to be harder. Independence Free here only uses one drum sound for each line here. So if I, if I play this hit, or this hat, at full velocity, and then I play it quiet, it's the exact same sound file just lowered in volume. Once you get into uh, some more intensive drum programs like Easy Drummer or um, all sorts of different stuff like that, the Stephen Slate drum kits, um, programs that cost a bit more money, as you lower the volumes it's actually referencing a different sound sample. So if you have an instrument with like a snare, you know, if you hit a snare in real life really hard, that's going to sound different than if you hit a snare quietly. So if you have a program that just takes that one hard hit snare sound and turns the volume down, it doesn't sound as realistic. The better drum programs are going to actually reference different velocity hits for uh, the different velocity MIDI inputs here. It creates a much more realistic experience. For right now though, we've adjusted our velocities and now it sounds a bit more realistic already. All right, now let's put our kick back in and our snare back in. And you know, I think those snares are a bit too loud, so let's lower those volumes a bit. If you right click and drag, you can select any notes within the field. You can adjust the velocity down here or by hovering over the top of the instrument, clicking and dragging down. And it'll do it for whatever selected. Now if we go back to the beginning and play it, sounds pretty decent. Kicks are probably still a bit too loud, so let's drop those a little also. Okay. Now let's say that you want to make the sound a bit more realistic. If you take a look at this, you'll notice that everything is exactly on the beat. And even though we've adjusted some of the velocities, you know, both kicks are the exact same velocity, both snares are the exact same velocity. Let's say you want to mix it up a bit so it's slightly off, just enough so it sounds like it's a real person doing it instead of a machine doing it. The easiest way to do that is to select everything with Control A, go to the Edit menu here, down to Humanize Notes. And what Humanize Notes does is it's got a few sliders here, one for timing, one for velocity, and one for timing bias. We're not going to worry about timing bias right now. If we adjust the timing and velocity, it's going to automatically and randomly change each note a little bit from all the other notes. So if you look at the position of the notes here, watch these as I slide this timing bar across. You see how it shifts them around and it's not shifting each one in the same direction? That's going to represent a slight amount of humanization. So what you can do is either slide it or type in a percentage here. Let's just do 4%. Didn't do much, but it's just enough so it's not quite on beat. And for velocity here, let's do 8%. And you can see these things adjust, so they're not all perfect now. Now if we listen back to it, it's almost not noticeable, but if you have a whole song, like let's say a five minute song, standard song, and all of your drum kits, or all of your drum beats are exactly on the beat, the human ear is going to recognize that. If there's this slight humanization done to the whole thing, it's going to go that much further to making it sound realistic. 
One other thing I'd like to point out about this drum kit and about most drum kits that's really cool is how it works with the, the hi-hat. Let's take this open hi-hat sound and we'll put it in at the start. Now if we play this, it's going to ring out for the full time. Okay. The cool thing is that if we place any other hat sound within the period of time where it would be ringing out, it'll automatically cut that sound off when the new sound comes in. Because like a real hi-hat, if you hit it full open and then hit it when it's closed, you close it and shut off that resonant sound it's making. So if we look at this, it'll play like this. That's how you can also get those cool little upbeat things that uh, happen in a lot of a lot of different music, especially rock music. First example that comes to mind, don't hate me, is Korn. They do a lot of this. If we put these open hats on the upbeats here, and we listen to it like this, it sounds decent. But if we put these closed notes on the beat, it's going to sound like this. So now we've got a drum beat here. What you might notice if you move this window is as we've been putting notes in here, it shows it up here. This is just a magnified version of this. So once you've got your drum beat where you like it, just close out the window here, and it's up here. We can click on it. Control C, copy it, and paste it as many times as we want, and the whole song will play through just like it normally does on the timeline here. You can also go into each individual one and change it a bit. Just to give it a bit of variation. Maybe go into the first one and instead of opening with this hat sound, maybe put a crash to start with. Maybe put a different crash on the second one. And then at the end, put some little drum fill. and then end with a nice kick-crash combo. So now the whole thing sounds a bit more like a drummer would actually play it with some little variations. It's that simple. You now have a drum pattern.